Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world, that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Joshua, chapter 24. <clears throat> Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem <clears throat> and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from behind the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery, and who did those great things, signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, you cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. They said, we are witnesses, he said. 
and put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, the Lord, our God, we will serve and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them for them at Shechem. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people. Our psalm today is Psalm 78, verses 1 through 7. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ear to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient time. That which we have heard and known and what our forefathers have told us, we will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord and the wonderful works he has done. He gave his decrees to Jacob and established the law for Israel, which he commanded them to teach their children, that the generations to come might know and the children yet unborn, that they in their turn might tell it to their children, so that they might put their trust in God and not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was, shall be, and world without end. Amen. Our second reading is the letter of Paul, the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. <clears throat> we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, <clears throat> even so, <clears throat> through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call and with the sound of God's trumpet will descend from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Jerusalem. 
Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. But when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them came, became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of Christ. I suspect some of you might be uh, wondering if I'm going to talk about the election this morning. I'm not. We are going to pray for our nation. And I'm going to devote my sermon to what I always do, which is the readings from Scripture. The church today begins to round a corner, liturgically, that is, I'm speaking about some of the subtle things that are happening in the liturgy beginning today. Hopefully you'll pick up on them. These three Sundays before the beginning of Advent, yes, Advent is coming pretty soon. These three Sundays before the beginning of Advent strike some, what we might call alarming themes. Joshua puts the fear of God into the Israelites as they gather for a covenant renewal ceremony at Shechem. And he presents the people there with a stark choice. Will you serve this God of liberation or not? Do you have what it takes to abide by the covenant or will you fall back and serve the gods of the Babylonians or the Egyptians or the Canaanites or to bring it a little more up to date, the gods of holiday consumerism or nationalism or progressive causes or feel-good religion? We'll do it, the people say. We'll do it. We'll serve the Lord. And that becomes the refrain of covenant renewal throughout the ages. We, in fact, did the same thing last week when we renewed our baptismal covenant on All Saints Day. It's a kind of fresh start an opportunity to come back home to who we are as God's people and what we are called to do in response to God's grace. Renewing that covenant should feel a little alarming, not in the sense of threat, but in the sense of true awe and reverence. Hopefully, we feel the gravity of what we're doing. This is God we're worshiping, the God of creation, the God of hope, the God of liberation, the God of new life, the God of love. There is a different kind of alarm reflected in Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. This is the letter that most scholars agree was likely Paul's very first early on in his career. The people in the fledgling church there had a very grave concern. You see, like most of the first generations of Christians, they were expecting Christ to return to earth in their lifetime and establish once and for all God's kingdom of justice and peace. 
Perhaps some of us were putting that hope on the outcome of our election. That's surely a lot to hang on any in human institution, far too much, but I digress. Any day, our forebears thought, they would all see Jesus again and start their life with him forever. But as they waited and waited, people in the community started to die, as people do. So the survivors began to wonder, what's to become of our loved ones who have died? Will they be able to participate in this new world and this new life with Christ? We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, Paul writes, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. And Paul goes on to give his very early understanding of what this hope is all about. He tries to explain why the Thessalonians don't need to worry, and neither do we need to worry. For even if you can't relate to the graphic picture of people being caught up into the clouds, the basic message is clear and true. Christ has overcome death and the grave. Death no longer has its sting for us. Christ, who is the light and life, has won the victory. But as time went on, and Jesus still had not returned after another generation or two, the church began to reflect more deeply on these things and a little differently and encouraged its members always to stand ready, to be prepared at any moment, but not to fret about when this new advent of Christ might come about. We need to get on with our lives, but at the same time, we need to live in a posture of readiness, poised at any moment to meet Christ. So we have this parable of the 10 bridesmaids. Five are wise and carry enough oil to keep their lamps burning throughout the night, but five are foolish and don't bother to prepare for a possible delay. And the note of alarm is sounded again as the bridegroom arrives, just as the foolish ones have left their watch to buy some more oil in a kind of panic. They've missed out on what everyone has been waiting for. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Are we awake? Are we poised at the ready? Do we have enough oil for our lamps? Are we prepared to meet Christ? Now, I'm not speaking about preparing for our own death, although that's surely a part of it. Nor am I speaking in any survivalist way. This is not about moving out to Idaho, digging a hole in a mountainside and stocking with supplies while we wait for some coming doom. Nor am I speaking as one of those apocalyptic Christians who still wait like that first generation for some literal parting of the clouds to which Christ in his white robes will descend from heaven, feet first, no doubt. But if that's not what our waiting consists in, then what is it? For what exactly are we preparing? And how do we go about it? Each week in our liturgy, we say, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. How do we make sense of that third part, the anticipation of Christ's coming again, if we have set aside biblical literalism? Some people have observed that in the liturgy, we live in the subjunctive mood. Well, perhaps it's been a long time since you've had to dust off your old English grammar, but recall that the subjunctive mood expresses a possibility, an anticipated reality. It expresses an as-if posture. We propose to act in the moment as if something already is the case, even if, in fact, that something literally has not yet come to pass. 
To say that in the liturgy we live in the subjunctive mood is not to say that we live in some fantasy world. It is to say that we believe we meet here not only the crucified and resurrected Christ, but also the Christ who has already established his reign. We worship, in other words, as if Christ already has returned, as if we now are participating in his glory. And that as if becomes part of our present reality. In the liturgy, we enter God's time in which past, present, and future come together as one. Now, I know this is difficult to grasp and to wrap our heads around. It simply does not fit into our normal linear way of thinking. That's why our liturgical symbols are so important. They give us a way to experience what cannot be experienced otherwise. They express subtly what cannot be expressed directly in words. Hopefully, all this lends an alarming urgency to what it means for us to prepare for worship, to keep our lamps trimmed, to anticipate our banquet around the table. And here, I suppose there is at least one literal dimension for us who are living in this time of COVID as we wait for our coming together in the flesh once again around the table. What a time of celebration and anticipation it is. For we gather, whether in person or virtually, not simply to get some useful information or to see friends or even to be inspired, any or all of which may or may not happen on a given Sunday. We gather to do something truly unique in this world, to do what Christians always have done, to worship the one who was, who is, and who is to come. We gather to meet the one who, like the bridegroom, finally arrives after a long delay. Are we asleep when he comes? Are we working out our grocery list? Are we frantically trying to gather ourselves at the last minute? Or are our lamps lit, oil at the ready? The alarm is sounding. The bridegroom's living. May we prepare not just to do things well, but to be ready to meet Christ, the Alpha and the Omega, who was, who is, and who is to come. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
the prayers of the people. In the name of Jesus, who is coming in glory, let us offer our prayers to God for all the world, saying, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the church, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, and Thomas, our bishop, and John, our priest, St. Andrew and St. John Southwest Harbor, St. Saviors Bar Harbor, Church of Our Father, Hull's Cove. Pray for the church in the province of the West Indies, for all who serve and have served in the armed forces of our country as we honor them on Veterans Day. For all who long for justice in the coming of God's kingdom may keep their lamps burning brightly and God in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this parish family, that our hearts may be the dwelling place of God and our lives show forth God's love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the leaders of the nation and all in authority, that they may put trust in God's call to let justice roll down like waters and keep God's commandment of love and mercy. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer for the healing of our nation, that God will heal the wounded relationships and mistrust among many people and will help us to work together for the common good. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those veterans who have served their nation and those who will do so now, that God will watch over them and keep them and help them serve with honor and justice. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this community of God's people, that we may be good stewards of God's gift to us and to use them wisely in the service of others. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those in danger and need, for the poor and the oppressed, and also for those who are ill, remembering those for whom we pray, especially Janet Davenport, Kendra Newcomb, Cindy Condon, Howard Taylor, Hannah Williams, Alex Almeyer Beck, Jeremy Ward, Cindy Frost, Deborah Pickering, Danny Urich, and Bruce Pobert that God will bring healing and renewal to them in body, mind, and spirit. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all the departed, remembering especially Albert Courier, that they may be with the Lord forever. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lifting our voices with all creation, with Margaret and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ, to you, O Lord, our God. Gracious God, grant that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, whose son died and rose again, hear the prayers we offer this day and let your loving kindness be our comfort for the sake of Jesus Christ, your living word. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your name to the glory of your name. 
。Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Also with you. Peace, Chris. Peace, all. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. 
On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. I invite you to say with me the prayer for spiritual communion. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful at the altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we offer you praise and thanksgiving. We present to you our souls and bodies with the earnest desire that we may always be united to you. And since we cannot now receive communion, we ask you to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves to you and embrace you with all the affections of our souls. Let nothing ever separate you from us. Let us serve you in this life until by your grace, we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.